In today's quick tip, we're gonna talk about CCSL uh, creation inside a closed caption creator. Um, so CCSLs are, are combined continuity and spotting lists um, used by production companies um, to basically um, break down uh, a movie or a production um, by scene, provide descriptions. Um, and it's usually used to help sell the film um, to other distributors, right? So inside closed caption creator, we try and make it as easy as possible to create CCSLs um, if this is a service you offer uh, to your clients. So um, I have an example, one up on the screen right now for a short trailer, and I just wanted to talk about it uh, really quickly. So um, we do support CCSL as like a, a docx, so it gets exported as a um, Microsoft Office document at the end. Um, and essentially it's made up of two event groups. So the the one on the left is uh, combined continuity and dialogue. This will basically have all your, your shot descriptions and stuff like that and time codes. Um, so we can generate this side using uh, automatic shot change detection. So we can, we can go through this and we'll talk about this a little bit more. And on the right hand side, we have the spotting list and the spotting list is really um, with the, the dialogue. So these are like your subtitles essentially or your dialogue. Um, which will show up on the right. So this is your second um, event group here. So what does this actually look like in closed caption creator? So if I switch windows here, I'm gonna create a new project um, and I'll call it uh, CCSL example. And I'll come over to choose file and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna pick uh, a short file here that I have. So I have the, the Sintel movie here somewhere. Here we go, MP4, so I'll open this up here. And I'll do create project. Um, so just telling me here, as I create this project, I'm importing uh, a file that's 24 frames. Um, and I was just working on something that was drop frame 30. So it's just telling me I should update my project frame rate. So I'll say yes. Um, and it's going to go through and scan the media and generate the shot change, uh, or sorry, the, the waveform uh, data. There you go. So that shows up at the bottom here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to uh, AI tools. I'm going to run automatic transcription. And I'm going to let this run in the background. So I'll just hit uh, submit job. And this should just take a couple seconds here because it's a short, uh, it's less than, you know, 10 minutes. Perfect. So, um, so that job has been submitted at the top here. So I'm just going to close out of this for now and let that, let that run in the background. Um, I'm going to come over to the AI tools menu again, and I'm going to do uh, shot change detection because I'm going to need that data. Um, to start. So I'll hit detect shot changes and I'm going to come down and just say uh, I'm going to do medium as the as the amount of uh, detection I want so that way it kind of detects uh, more shot changes than less but it won't uh, it won't detect you know fades and stuff like that which is fine. Um, if you don't have detect shot change uh, listed here it's probably because you're running the the browser based version of closed caption creator so you might have to download a desktop version um, and that's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So you can do that um, pretty easily and just to run that. And those shot changes are, are going to appear in the, the timeline. Um, so if I scroll through here, we'll just see. Uh, yeah, there they are. So they show up as red markers in the timeline. Um, and they also show up in the markers tab of the Quick Tools drawer. So you can see that here. So I can actually navigate by shot change, right? So there's a bunch of them here, right? So you can see them all kind of line up here. Um, and one of the really cool things that we can do here is we can also generate um, an event group based on these shot changes. So I'll just hit create event group, right? And that's going to create a new event group at the top here called shot changes. And I'll just, uh, I'll delete my first event group because I don't, I don't actually need this right now. So I'll go through and delete this. And the reason why this is kind of cool is because we now have uh, events for each shot change, right? So you can kind of see that here. Um, and if I go into my, if I go back to the example CCSL, you'll see here that those events correspond to each row on the combined continuity and dialogue side here. So you can actually see each event will, will turn into a shot change. And the shot change description, right, so you'll see that here, will just end up going in as a note. So if I go over to the notes panel here and select here, you'll see that, you know, for every single shot change here, my job is basically to write down the description of the note here. So if I play this back, you know, what's happening here, you know, fade in, mountain pass, opening title screen, right? I guess fade up is what it is. Um, opening title screen, 
right? So you can write that as a description inside the notes panel here. Um, you can also write it uh, directly in. So there's actually a notes um, icon here. So you can actually add that here too. And you can just ignore the reply part of the notes um, panel here because the reply part is really more for QC workflows. So for now, we're just really focused on that, the shot changed uh, description, the shot description, which will go into the notes uh, section here, right? And you can make this bigger if you want to as well. So let's close that. Awesome. Um, and now I'm going to go back to my AI tools. I'm going to open up the transcription import dashboard just to see how my job's doing. Okay, great. So it's done. So I can select this job and I can import this as, as subtitles. Right, so you can see here that it comes in as subtitles. It also comes in with my speaker ID. So you can see speaker zero here, or speaker zero, speaker one. Um, so it basically detects the speakers and it generates like all my all my subtitles. Um, this is great because if I go back to my CCSL, that's going to be the spotting list on the right here. So you can see here, it's just basically the dialogue, right? Now, the thing is, you'll notice that this dialogue here needs to basically also exists on the dialogue side for the combined continuity and dialogue section on the left. So let's do that now. And we make it really easy. We're going to do, uh, I'm going to take AI subtitles 02. I'm going to go to the event group options and I'm going to set this as track two. Okay. And so what track two does, it basically just, well, it just shows up at the top here essentially, right? So you can see that here, but it allows me to also jump over to shot changes, right? And what I can do now is I can, I can, I can write, or I can basically click on the, the, the event group options here and I can copy the dialogue from track two, right? And so now what that's going to allow me to do is, is basically if I, if I, if I click here, right, you'll see that all the dialogue has been collected from every single, you know, dialogue that from the top here. Right. So you can see, you know, for something like this, we've basically copied, I'm searching for someone. And so you can see all the dialogue is here for the entire kind of breakdown of that shot, right? So we've basically copied uh, a kindred, spirit, a dragon, dangerous quest. That all basically gets put into the shot here. So you can see, if I look here, that'll basically fill up all the dialogue here, right? But we'll still have the individual dialogues on the right-hand side with the time codes. Awesome. So once we've done all this, we can basically come back. Um, one of the things I like to do is I kind of like to come in and just and rename my speakers, right? So it detected two speakers here. Um, I don't actually know the speaker's name. I know there's um, there's a woman with a staff and she's like the dragon hunter, right? Uh, so I can update that. And I know for the old man, um, basically he's just you know he's the he's the wise man who provides uh, who who provides wisdom. So I can come in here and update this as well. I'll just change some of the colors here so you can differentiate. And you can now see those uh, those pop up here, right? Um, and I probably want to include these inside of the the event group text because that's what's going to show up in the dialogue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the the name, right? So whoever the speaker is, I'm going to assign that inside. I'm going to insert that as text into the event. Um, so to do that, I'll just basically select all my events, come into insert, uh, go to speaker name. And then whatever the assigned speaker is, I'm just going to put that right in. Um, I can either put that in line or I can put it at the top. So in this case, I'll put it at the top and I'll insert the speaker. You know, so that will all show up with the speaker name at the top here. So you can see that here. Awesome. And now we're kind of into the, the you know, the last part. So the last part is the actual exporting of the CCSL. So I am jumping over a few steps here. So essentially, you'd still have to take the time, right? This isn't a quick process by any means. This is a very long um, you know, you might get 20 minutes done in a, in a day of the film, um, but now you have to go through and, and, you know, write all your descriptions, right? So you'd come in, write the description for each one. You might have to insert new markers, create new events, but at least this gets you started. Um, and what you'll do now is you'll come out to, you know, when you're done all this, you can come and export. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, um, so it's a type of broadcast list, but it actually has its own uh, export option here. So combine continuity and spotting list. Hit next, you know, name your title, CCSL example, that's fine. Um, we do support just the one template for now. So we might be adding more templates as we go. So you can leave this as default and it's going to ask you, uh, you know, on the top, you want the shot change. So which event group are you basically, you know, putting on each side? So if we go back here, you know, combine continuity and dialogue, this is going to be our shot changes. So that looks good. And in terms of our spotting list, we're going to change this from shot list over to AI subtitles 02. And then we're going to hit export. And that's going to export a CCSL example for us. And I'll just say, 
two here because I have a couple of these. And now I can actually open that up for you just so you can actually see um, what that looks like. So if I go here, I'll go browse, go to my downloads folder. It's right there. Perfect. Open that up. And you can see inside of Word, um, all of my shot changes, right? So you can see everything here. So it's basically generated. Um, it's left. There's no uh, description. So it's just basically left the default description, which is the shot change number, which is fine. And then you'll see here that I have all of my, my dialogue on the right with my shot changes on the left. Um, it's not a very dialogue heavy movie by any means, right? It's very lapsed, but so that's why there's a lot of, uh, a lot more shot changes than there is dialogue that you'd have to describe here. Awesome. So hopefully that gets you started on, uh, on CCSLs. Uh, there are a bunch of, of good examples in terms of what like completed CCSLs will look like available online for you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our team, uh, here at support at closed caption creator.com. Our real goal here is to work with people, um, cause this was something that came up from, from our users who are asking for this, um, is to kind of build tools to, to not automate this process a hundred percent, but basically to make it a lot easier to generate these right through shot change detection, generating event groups, being able to work on, on two event groups at the same time, that type of thing. So hopefully if you have any suggestions, feel free to send those in as well. Um, but hopefully this gets you started in terms of, uh, what you're, what you're looking to do. Thanks so much.